Horner Syndrome Introduction Horner Syndrome is a classic neurologic syndrome whose signs include biosis, ptosis, and anhydrosis. Horner Syndrome can be produced by a lesion anywhere along the sympathetic pathway that supplies the head, eye, and neck. Sympathetic chain synapses that may be compromised in a patient who has Horner Syndrome are lateral horn and the superior cervical ganglion. It includes ptosis, slight drooping of eyelid due to paralysis of superior tarsal muscle, meiosis, pupil constriction, anhydrosis, absence of sweating, and flushing of affected side of face. Etiology The most common cause of Horner syndrome is Pankos tumor. A Pankos tumor is typically located at the apex of the lung, often at the superior sulcus, and can physically compress the sympathetic fibers as they traverse the stellate ganglion. Shoulder pain on the affected side is also a common presenting symptom of a Pankos tumor due to the compression of brachial plexus. The sympathetic nerves that innervate the eye and face originate in the brainstem, transverse the upper spinal cord, exit it at the upper thoracic level, and then transverse the ipsilateral stellate ganglion. A fusion of the inferior cervical and first thoracic sympathetic ganglion. This is where the fibers can be compressed by an apical lung tumor. From there, they ascend to the face and eye. Horner syndrome can result from a lesion anywhere along a three neuron sympathetic adrenergic pathway that originates in the hypothalamus. The first order neuron descends caudally from the hypothalamus to the first synapse, which is located in the cervical spinal cord. Level C8 to T2, also called ciliospinal center of budge. The second order neuron travels from the sympathetic trunk through the brachial plexus over the lung apex. It then ascends to the superior cervical ganglion, located near the angle of the mandible and the bifurcation of the common carotid artery. Stellate ganglion compression by Pankos tumor. The third order neuron then ascends within the adventitia of the internal carotid artery through the cavernous sinus, where it is in close relation to the sixth cranial nerve. The oculosympathetic pathway then joins the ophthalmic division of the fifth cranial nerve. In the orbit and the eye, the oculosympathetic fibers innervate the iris dilator muscle as well as Muller's muscle, a small smooth muscle in the eyelids responsible for a minor portion of the upper lid elevation and lower lid retraction. Clinical Manifestations As discussed earlier, the classic signs of a Horner syndrome are ptosis, meiosis, and anhydrosis. The degree of anisocoria is more marked in the dark than in light. There is associated dilation lag, an asymmetry in pupillary redilation between the two eyes when the light source is moved away from the eye. The Horner pupil will redilate more slowly, by 15 to 20 seconds, than the normal pupil. Anhydrosis is present in central or preganglionic lesions. In infants and children, impaired facial flushing is more often apparent than anhydrosis. Associated neurologic symptoms and signs can be useful in localizing the origin of the Horner syndrome. Brainstem signs, diplopia, vertigo, ataxia, lateralized weakness, suggest a brainstem localization. Maleopathic features bilateral or ipsilateral weakness, long track signs, sensory level, bowel and bladder impairment, suggest involvement of the cervical thoracic cord, arm pain and or hand weakness typical of brachial plexus, lesions, suggest a lesion in the lung apex, atrophy of the ipsilateral intrinsic hand muscles due to involvement of the C8 and T1 spinal nerve levels, ipsilateral extraocular paresis, particularly a sixth nerve palsy in the absence of other brainstem signs, localize a lesion to the cavernous sinus. An isolated Horner syndrome accompanied by neck or head pain suggests an internal carotid dissection. Diagnosis Confirmation of Horner syndrome Pharmacologic testing with cocaine or apraclonidine drops can confirm the diagnosis of Horner syndrome. Localization of the lesion Hydroxyamphetamine eye drops will differentiate between a lesion affecting the first brainstem or cervical cord or second order chest or neck neuron and one affecting the third order or postganglionic neuron above the superior cervical ganglion at the carotid bifurcation. 
Treatment The first step in the management of a patient with Horner syndrome is to perform appropriate studies to identify the cause. Imaging is often indicated in new onset Horner syndrome unless it occurs in the setting of trauma or surgical manipulation. High yield sites of imaging can be identified based on accompanying signs and symptoms. These may include, amongst others, radiologic evaluation of brain, cervical spinal cord, cerebral vasculature, head, neck, and thorax. Treatment depends on the etiology of Horner syndrome. 